Hey, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Dan. I'm one of the business development managers here at Tygo, and I'm here to talk about and launch, along with my colleague Rob Hansel, who will be taking the second part of this session, our Tiger Data Analytics Consultancy. Effectively, we are launching this service, and I'm going to go back to a quote that Ben started the, uh, the presentation with. We're looking to empower customers, our organisations, our partners and our prospects to make better data-based decision-making, utilising the evidence that can be provided from UCNC platforms. And we're effectively doing this to provide insights to support you as our customers and your team. Question is, why are Tiger doing this? So we believe and we know that there is significant value to be uncovered in understanding and utilising UCNC data. And in-house, we have the skills and the expertise across our team to be able to uncover this insight. With 40 years plus experience in this industry, our data analysts can provide insight into your UCNC platforms, no matter at what stage your organisation is, on your journey, on your analytics journey, and that pyramid that Ben showed earlier today. We're a trusted software and solution partner. We offer a complete package from a software perspective, but also that insight and advice from our engineers and analysts at any point during that process. Our position in the market and with our customers as well means that we have really great insight, visibility into that knowledge, into those trends, and into the typical challenges that are faced by our customers, by our partners and organisations across different industries. And the slide earlier that had kind of the welcome to Tiger and all of our customers. We work with finance, public sector, you know, large enterprises, public sector, whatever that may be. And we have great visibility across all these different markets, all these different industries, and we can help them to transform the way they're working by understanding that UCNC data. Now, this list isn't extensive by any means, but what I'm showing here today is it doesn't matter what platform you're on today, what sort of platform you're looking to move to in the future, be that a cloud provider, staying on prem, doing something a little bit hybrid, or having a multiple diverse environment with different platforms. We stay vendor agnostic up to a certain point. We like to look at what the Magic Quadrant are doing, what our customers are doing, what our partners are doing, ensuring that we have integration points into all the leading UCNC vendors. So what exactly is our consultancy and how exactly are we going to do this and get this data? So Rob, in a little while, is going to go into more detail of the reporting and the assessment. But effectively, we can do this in a couple of different ways with customers and with new organisations as well. So you don't need to be a customer of Tigers today. And I'm hoping that some of the people I invited onto this call who are our prospects have joined as well and you can take value from this exercise too. So what do we do? We capture that historic data and we capture live data. So for those existing customers who have a Tiger Prism system today, we already have months and years, potentially longer than that, of your data to go back, look at trend analysis and understand that data. For new customers, depending on what platform you're on and if you have any data, we can potentially take your data in that format, process that into a Tiger Prism system and use that data for historic analysis. Of course, we have the option to spin up something new over a period of time and look at that live data. We then use our in-house team of analysts and experts to review your data and create reports of findings, trends, anything in that information that might be quite interesting and useful for you as a business to understand and use that information to make those better decisions in the future. Once those reports have been created, we then spend some time with you as the customer of a workshop style environment where we present these findings to you. We will assess those and we'll actually make recommendations as to how you could potentially optimize, save money, save costs, transform the change in an easier way. So why do customers and why do our partners and why do our prospects potentially need the service? So what are we seeing in the market at the moment? People are migrating, there's new cloud technologies coming to the market all the time, and organizations are looking at moving from one way of working to a new way of working. 
And this may be because they want to move from on-prem to cloud technologies. They want to become more agile. They want to react to changes in the environment, hybrid working, COVID and this sort of stuff as well. And we understand that migrating to a new way of working can be very challenging. And that gets only more difficult and more complex with legacy UC environments, different PBXs and whatever that may be. So using the team of Tiger Data Analysts, we effectively will give greater visibility into all of those different platforms. And that's going to support business critical decisions by interpreting that data, identifying those patterns, again, finding ways to optimize. This in turn can save time, money and resource. And as an organization, it's going to allow you to focus on activities that can drive a business forward. For individuals in a business, and I'm going to talk about this in a little bit, one customer that we've done this for recently, it gave that person the opportunity to become an internal champion for their organization. They did this exercise with us. They found the information very, very important and useful and were able to take that back to their board, back to their directors to say, I've got the evidence to make these decisions. You need to change in a certain way and effectively spearheaded that organization's way of working for a future deployment into a cloud UC environment. What that also meant is cost, which was associated to doing these activities, reviewing the data yourself, understanding licenses, core volumes, that sort of information, could then be placed in other areas to allow budget in terms of areas and future proofing that organization. And then the last point I'm going to make that I think is extremely important. We've got to this point now where we're a couple of years down the line from the COVID pandemic. And what we saw were that organizations changing overnight. They had to react to what happened and they had to react quickly. And a lot of the time they didn't have the time or the knowledge to really make that transformation in the most optimal way. They gave people the tools and the resources they need to work remotely, work from home via Microsoft Teams licensing, whatever that may be. And we've got to this point now where those customers are coming back to us and our partners are coming back to us and they're asking us the question, did we make the right decisions given the circumstances? And now that we've kind of moved into this new way of working, be it fully remote for some organisations, hybrid or bringing people back to the office, how can we now review what we've done and understand, did we make the right choices? And is there opportunity here to do something a little bit different, save some money, save some time, save some resource, and ultimately do best by our users and best by the business. So this is very much becoming part of our product strategy. And although I'm launching it today, we have completed this exercise with a number of organizations already. We have some collateral around this as well, which I can share, which uh, Mike and our marketing department kindly put this together, a two page PDF document, which can be sent out to partners, customers, prospects. We will make sure a copy of that goes out after this, after this session. And as I've mentioned, although we're launching this today, we have done this now with uh, two councils and another organization as well. And I wanted to throw this in here from Kingston Council and their kind of position where they know they need to change. They have lots of legacy, have lots of on-prem technology. They also were a Tiger customer, but the person who was running the Tiger system had left, left the business. So this Tiger asset sat there, was collecting their data, but they weren't really using it. They weren't really sure how they could make the most of that data. So one of the partners we work with very closely spoke with us and said, how can we use that Tiger data that is sat there collecting those CDR records to help Kingston and Sutton Council effectively make the decisions on transformation, understand what licensing they need, understanding who needs you know, calling functionality, save them costs and save them time when they embark on their transformation to a cloud-based technology. So what we did is exactly what I've gone through on the session so far. We looked at that data, we defined the criteria as to what the information they were looking for in regards to call volumes, call forwards, trunk capacity, handset usage. And we painted a picture of what that entire UC estate looked like today. And there was quite a lot of shocking information that came out of that in regards to percentage of calls that were being missed, percentage of calls which were on, uh, sorry, percentage of direct dials which were, which were on permanent call forwards. A lot of these call forwards were leaving the business and coming back into the business, creating double trunks and double costs. And lots of staff mobiles as well that had been issued during COVID, we imported those into the system as well. 
to see that actually someone's got a mobile, they've got a direct dial, and they might have a Microsoft Teams license. That's three potential licenses for one user, but they're only using their mobile phone. Their direct dials go into their mobile phone every time. They don't need a handset. They don't need a soft client. They don't need that part of the license, whatever that may be. So after we completed this exercise, I went back to Ash, who was the IT program manager at Kingston, and said, can you just summarise the experience with Tiger? And he's come back with this quote, which is saying to us that we really help them kind of build that foundation for their transformational journey. And I'm glad to say that once they go through this transformational journey, whichever software they decide to go in for the future, they are saying that they will stay with Tiger moving forward so we can deliver this kind of ongoing value, albeit not in a consultancy, but we can train them to use this platform and make the most out of that new asset that they have. Now we're going to pass over to Rob, who's going to show some of the uh, the workbooks and the reports and the types of data that we're getting out of this, how that data can then be interpreted to make those better decisions. Bear with me, caller. I think I might need to make Rob the <laughs> presenter. There you go. Rob, you should be around. I am indeed. Good afternoon, everyone from Wales, from sunny Wales. Uh, I'm just going to go through a little bit about the sort of outputs that we will see or might give you from, um, from the exercise that Dan's been talking about, about the consultancy exercise. Um, so let me just share my screen. Um, so this is a, this is a sort of um, output that we get. Um, we we can provide a lot of different um, outputs from the uh, consultancy exercise, and a lot of that is um, before we start the exercise, we go through with you what would you like to get out of this exercise. You know what are you looking for, and if you don't know what you're looking for, then we'll provide you with a set of, of if you like standard reports, and then from those reports we will dive deeper to find out what what actually is is going on with your with your platforms and um, this is a, a workbook an excel workbook there are lots and lots of worksheets in here as you can see um, and not all of these may be uh, relevant to you as a company but i'm going to go through some of these just now and go through some of the information that we will uh, we will see uh, as part of that hang on sorry my screen has just gone completely awol um as part of that information so first one i'm going to go to here is a management summary and this just gives you information around what sort of type of calls you're getting. And Dan mentioned um, one of the things we did, and also Richard mentioned, uh, is that we do this custom numbering plan. And what we can do is um, we can bring in the mobile numbers from your company and put them into Tiger and label them. Um, and so in this example, all the mobiles were labeled staff mobile. Um, and you can see here that when we're looking at simple things like top dialed by calls, top dialed by talk time, top dial bar cost, staff mobiles were actually quite uh, quite frequently being seen actually by cost, the top six, out of the top 10, six were staff mobiles, which is unusual. We wouldn't normally expect to see that. And these sort of things immediately will trigger sort of alarms around, well, why are we seeing this? What's causing that? And so then we'll look deeper into that for you. So this is like a very top level generic report, but then we can go and look deeper into that and see, right, what sort of extensions have we got? So this is an example of an extension activity report. Uh, this customer had 7,000 extensions listed in, in their directory. But when we actually looked at the activity on those over the last year, only 3,000 were actually making calls during the last year. So again, if you're moving to Teams and you're looking at going to Teams Voice, you don't want to license 7,000 people for the voice side of Teams when you only actually need 3,000 voice licenses. Um, and we'll go deeper into this activity in a minute as well to look at who's making internal or external calls, because if they're only making internal calls, they don't need a full Teams voice license because they're only doing peer-to-peer -peer calls. So these, this is the sort of data that we can suck out from your phone system. Uh, something else that's quite interesting is around your channel group utilization. Um, something that uh, Chris mentioned, his trunk usage and how busy his trunks were. I was seriously amazed, uh, Chris, with the, the, the sheer volume of calls that you had coming into your 111 service. Um, but that's, again, quite an important thing to look at. How busy are our trunks? We can see what the available channels are on your trunks. When do you, have you hit a maximum concurrent call rate, which this, these trunks have, these top two here, these bottom two here have done. 
um, and what was the time at max concurrency so this trunk here they've had 12 hours 35 minutes and 42 seconds at max concurrency so that's that's 12 hours where your customers are getting busy tone because they can't get through because your trunks are fully maximized out. Um, and in this example, this was actually caused by nothing to do with trunk usage, really. It was to do with the way that calls were being pushed through the phone system. Um, let me just go a bit further on. Uh, another one that is very heavily used is hunt group usage. So I'm sure you've all done this. You create lots of hunt groups, especially as Dan said during COVID. I'm sure lots of hunt groups were created. Uh, how many are still relevant for today? Um, and a recent um, one we did for a customer, they had 658 hunt groups configured in their phone system, and only 74 of them had actually made an active call in the last year. So that gives you an idea of how much um, how much work can be reduced by doing this sort of um, this sort of idea because. If you've got 678 hunt groups, you don't want to recreate those in your new platform when you're only 74 have actually made live calls. And what we can also do is also give you when the last call was seen hitting that hunt group. So that helps as well with you to decide, well, you know, this hunt group here, for example, I've only had two calls come into it. The last one was the 27th of March. Am I interested in taking that hunt group into the next play into the next phase? Because actually it's not used heavily enough for us to do that. If you've got a Cisco phone system, we can also do information around the device types you've got, how much those are being used, the duration of those device types, and also what the unique count of those device types are as well. So we can provide information around different Cisco devices. I'm gonna jump forward ahead for time's sake, um, because what came out of this particular process when we did it for this customer were these last two here, DNS, DNS transferred internally, and DNs with call forward to PSTM. Um, and as Dan was mentioning, this is a very common thing where you've got loads and loads of extensions and, and social services in councils are, are a prime example of this, where you give people loads and loads of extension numbers and they just forward their phone number to um, reception or they forward it to a single person. Um, and in this example for this customer, they had 25,000 calls coming into this extension number that was being immediately transferred just to the reception function. So you've got to argue, well, why does this person need this phone number? Because if they're diverting all their calls to their DDI directly to this to, to the reception function, why are we giving them a DDI? They don't need a DDI. Just push all the calls to the reception, and then you can push the call out to that user without using the DDI involved. Um, and another example of this, uh, was, and I'm sure this doesn't happen very often nowadays, but for this particular customer, it was a massive issue where calls were being transferred out to PSTN numbers. And some of these might be landlines, but they might be people's home phone numbers. They might actually be company numbers that the calls are going out and back in again for. But a lot of these were mobile calls. So people were forwarding their extension number directly out to their mobile and generating some very large volumes of data that was costing the company quite a bit of money and, and this is one cost this cost figure over here that, that we can see but also every single one of these calls that's being forwarded out to PSTN is using two trunks so this particular customer their SIP trunks were being maxed out not because they were getting a massive volume of calls but because they were actually forwarding a lot of their calls back out to their mobiles and and if I go back to that very very first slide that we saw here in the management summary some of these, like this example here for this mobile, this staff mobile, they'd had 12,000 calls during a year going to this mobile, 265 hours of call of talk time going to that mobile. And these are things that this sort of consultancy package can highlight very quickly and, and, and show you where you've got issues. Um, and as Dan mentioned, that might have been put in place during COVID, they might have been put in place years ago. Everyone's forgotten about them. Um, and now you need to kind of stop those from happening because you're just throwing money out the window, really, and you're utilizing your SIP trunks incorrectly. So I just want to give you a quick oversight of the sort of data we get out of here, and hopefully that's efficient. If you've got any questions, we'll take them in the Q&A um, portion at the end. Thank you very much. Thank you, Rob. Got away with that one. Two minutes over. Shame on you. <laughs> I know. I'm so sorry. Rest of the morning. <laughs> No, absolutely fantastic. There's always some great information that comes out of those, as you say, those those uncovered information that 
we talked about it with Chris earlier, where you get that kind of like little rabbit hole, you start to look at something else and you find something really interesting as you go down it. Sometimes it does take that third party knowing what to look for to find and uncover those extras. So the consultancy session, again, if you are struggling with knowing how to or what to do, it's a really good option to, to get one of our specialists essentially going, looking at that data, looking at your historic information and uncovering no doubt something that, that you will have found um, yourself eventually, but probably do it in a lot more efficient uh, manner and, and gain some insight as to and context as to why and, and what what's actually happening there as well for you.